I, I always think you paint for yourself. You've got ideas and feelings and, and somehow you want to express these, you want to put them out there. And I, I feel I can express enough with, with the two-dimensional form. You know. An image can convey some deeper, more psychological resonances than the verbal word can. An image can allow your imagination to work. I guess technique for me is just a means to an end. Um, over the years I've had many different techniques. What I like about this style of painting is the flexibility to cover any subject matter. You start off with the drawing and the drawing is one aspect of it, but then you start to paint over that. But if you want to change something slightly, you can do that. The painting is more organic and it does tend to change as, as it grows and, and as time goes on. And you can basically have as much or as less detail as you like. And it's a style that's uh, quite enjoyable to work with and fun, you know, it's, I like that. Well, the originality in, uh, with painting doesn't come through the medium, it comes through the imagery that you're putting on there. I've never been overly interested in, the, in just reflecting the natural world. I guess a lot of my ideas on painting reflect my interest in Buddhism. I'm interested in that interconnectedness of all things in the universe, you know. And I think we live in a very multi-dimensional existence. There are many different layers. All imagery, in a way, is a symbol for different things. Now, I guess a lot of my work, I've gathered in symbols from myth, from religion, and I put them together. And it reflects, to me anyway, it reflects inner states. When I first started painting, um, I would just draw from my imagination and I was not aware of some of the images I was doing. I liked that image and therefore I painted it. And it was only later that I suddenly went back and started reading, especially with Jung and, and people like that, that and, um, and through mythology. And you suddenly realise, yes, these images are quite archetypal. They've been around for a long time. And it's interesting the way they, they sort of pop up again. And, but I believe in that, you know, because I believe that now, all this imagery exists in our collective unconscious and, and will come up in day-to-day -day living, you know. I don't think the, the painting has to have any specific meaning, um, but you do start off with a, a concept in mind and then and you know what type of images you want to put around that. It's like a dream in a sense. It, it, it's something you feel and it's put together with certain images, just like a dream is. Yeah. There's a reason I've put them together, because they express a certain theme, but that is that is uh, nebulous and it is flexible. Some of the um, names I give to paintings are fairly specific names. I've got you know, paintings like fear and um, anxiety and things like that. And the images in that are, are meant to try and reflect that, that's those sort of feelings, but they're not specific. Some people will find certain imagery in one of my paintings um, frightening. Other people might see it as quite benign, you know. I mean, it's like music. I mean, I mean, music doesn't say anything in particular, but it does uh, create uh, emotions. And I think that's what a painting should be. It should be emotive. A person has to be drawn into a work of art. So it's got to have a certain intrinsic beauty about it. It's got to attract your eye and make and hold your attention. Then you can look into it and then you can use your imagination to try and work out what the meaning might be or the relevance may be. It all goes back to does the art reflect our culture and our beliefs, you know, our fears and, and our hopes, you know, and I guess if an art form does that then it's relevant. But artists will still keep painting pictures and, and you know, musicians will keep trying to write music and, uh, because there's that innate human need to express yourself.